All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about Riemann sums. And so this is the part of calculus where we start to talk about how to find the area under a curve or under a function. And so let's consider this function right here. We have f of x equals 64 minus x squared. And let's say we want to know the area under this function or under this curve from zero to eight along our x axis. Right, so we're looking at the interval from zero to eight. And so the area that we're looking for would be this area right here that I am shading in. And so how would we find the area under this curve? Well, as we go through calculus, we'll see different ways that we can calculate that area. But the first way that we're gonna do this is by using rectangles. And so let's try to find the area under this curve, or let's try to approximate it by using four rectangles in this case. So that means that n, or the number of rectangles, will be equal to four. And so I'm gonna make my rectangles like this. We'll have one right here, then I'll draw one here, and we'll have another rectangle right here, and then we'll have one right here. That one's gonna be really small, so it's kinda of hard to see. But notice that I drew these rectangles such that the upper right-hand corner of each rectangle is touching our function. And we call this finding the area under the curve using right endpoints because we're looking at the right side of our rectangles. We are using the right corner of our rectangles and meeting them up with our function. And so then what we have to do to find the area under this curve is to calculate the area for each of these rectangles. And so how do we find the area of a rectangle? Well, we take the width and multiply it by the height. And so the formula for the area in this case is going to look like this. We'll have that the area is equal to the sum from i equals one to n, the number of rectangles of delta x times f of x sub i, right? And so what this represents is delta x is going to be the width of our rectangles, and f of x sub i is going to be the height of each of our rectangles. And so notice that because that right-hand corner of the rectangle is on the function, the height of each rectangle will be equal to the value of that point on that function, right? So whatever the value of this point is on that function will tell us the height along the y-axis of that rectangle. And that would be true for this rectangle and this rectangle and our small one down here. And so that would be where our height comes from. But for delta x, our width, that's going to be equal to b minus a divided by the number of rectangles where b and a correspond to the interval that we are interested in, right? So our interval from A to B is the same as from zero to eight. And so delta X in this scenario would be equal to eight minus zero divided by four, right? Our value for B would be eight and our value for A would be zero. And then N, as we said, our number of rectangles here is four and so we divide by four, and that means that delta x would be equal to eight divided by four, which is equal to two. And so notice that the width of each of our rectangles is going to be the same. We have four equal rectangles that we are using to find or approximate the area under the curve of this function from zero to eight. And you'll even see that we found that delta x was equal to two, where the width of each of these rectangles is two. And you can see that here on our graph as well, that our first rectangle goes from zero to two, our second rectangle goes from two to four, and our third one goes from four to six, and our last one is from six to eight, and so each of them have a width of two, and so this is true. And so now let's use this formula to calculate the area underneath this curve using these rectangles. And just note that we could also write that this area formula is equal to r sub n, and that just means that we have a Riemann sum using right endpoints, that's what the r is for, right endpoints, with n number of rectangles. And so in this case, we would be looking at r sub four because we're using right endpoints and we have four rectangles. And that would be equal to the sum from i equals one to four of delta x times f of x sub i. And we know that delta x is equal to two and we could also just pull that outside of our sum and that'll make it a little bit easier to calculate. So we'll have r sub four is equal to delta x, which is two times the sum from i equals one to four of f of x sub i. And so how are we going to handle this f of x sub i portion? Well, if we look at our graph here, we're gonna be looking at each of these points where the corner of the rectangle touches the graph. So we're gonna have x equals two, x equals four, 
x equals 6 and x equals 8. And so we can rewrite this to be that r sub 4 is equal to 2 times f of 2 plus f of 4 plus f of 6 plus f of 8. Right, we took each of those values of x and plugged them into our function, which is right up here. And so that's actually going to be our next step. And so if we clean up our work a little bit, we can then evaluate each of these points on the function and find what our area will be. And so if we do that, this will be equal to two times two plugged into our function. So 64 minus two squared, two squared is four. So 64 minus four will be 60. And then we'll add that to plugging four into our function. So 64 minus four squared. So you'll have 64 minus 16, which will be equal to 48. And then we'll add this to plugging six into our function. So we'll have 64 minus six squared. So 64 minus 36, which will be equal to 28. And then we'll add eight plugged into our function, which will be 64 minus eight squared, which is 64 minus 64. So that would be zero. And so if we look at our graph over here, the height of each of these rectangles is going to correspond to each of these values. The height of our first rectangle will be 60 because that is the value of y for that point on the function. The height of our second rectangle is 48. The height of our third rectangle is 28. And then the height of our last rectangle is zero, which now you can see why I made it so small. And so for each of these points, we have two comma 60, four comma 48, six comma 28, and eight comma zero, those are our right endpoints that we used for this calculation of the right Riemann sum or the Riemann sum using right endpoints. And so now let's go ahead and finally solve this. We'll have 60 plus 48 plus 28 plus zero, and that will be equal to two times 136, which will be equal to 272. And so this will be the area of these rectangles underneath this curve. And so notice that that's not going to be a perfect value for our area, right? These rectangles don't account for these little areas in between here. And so this is an approximation of this area, right? It's not perfect. In fact, it's going to be an underestimation of the area because we're leaving some of the parts out. This is going to be less than what the area actually is underneath this curve. And so now as a result of this calculation, we can say that x sub i here in our formula is going to be equal to the following. We'll have that x sub i is equal to the lower bound of our interval a plus delta x times i. And so what I mean by that is our first value of x sub i, which was two, right? That's the first value we plugged into our function. We have our lower bound of our interval zero plus delta x, which is the width of the rectangles, two times i, right? So since this was our first value of x sub i, it would be x sub one. And so i is equal to one. So you'd have zero plus two times one. And so that's where two would come from. And then this i would change to two for your next term. And so you'd have zero plus two times two. And so that would be zero plus four. That's where this four would come from. And then for our third term, you'd have zero plus the width two times three. We're now on the third term. So two times three is six plus zero is six. And then for our last term, you'd have zero plus two times four because it would be our fourth x sub i. And so then you'd have two times four, which is eight plus a, which is zero, and that's where you get eight from. And so even though we found these points by looking at this graph, this is how you would do it without the graph. And of course, this is given that you are using right endpoints. If you're using left endpoints, which is what we're going to look at next, it's a little bit different. All right, so when you wanna find the area under a curve or you want to approximate that area using right endpoints or rectangles, this is the formula that you are going to use. This is the formula for a Riemann sum that uses right endpoints. We have delta x right here, or b minus a divided by n, times the summation from one to n, the number of rectangles, that's what n is, of our endpoints evaluated on our function, right? This is what we said x sub i was equal to for right endpoints. We have a plus i times delta x, which again is just b minus a divided by n. And so with that, I think we are ready to finally look at how we would calculate the area under this curve if we used left endpoints instead of right endpoints like we did here. All right, so here we have the same function, f of x equals 64 minus x squared. And we have our same graph just with a different color here for our line. And we still wanna find the area under this curve. And so that means we're gonna be looking at the interval from zero to eight, 
and we're still going to use four rectangles. So we're gonna have n is equal to four. And so let's go ahead and actually draw those rectangles. And so our first one will be right here. Then our next one will be here. And our next one will be here. And then our final rectangle will be right here. All right, so notice that this time when I drew these rectangles, that I used the left-hand corner of each rectangle and met that up with our function, right? The left corner meets up with our function. And so that is going to be the difference between finding the area with right endpoints or left endpoints. It changes which corner of your rectangle is touching your function. And so then in this case, if we write down our area formula, we have that the area is equal to the summation from i equals one to n of delta x, the width of our rectangles, times f of x sub i, the height of our rectangles. And so then in this case, since we're using left endpoints, this will also be equal to L sub n. And that represents a Riemann sum that is using left endpoints. And so that's why we use this L to represent the left endpoints. And so if we're going to calculate the area using the left endpoints, let's start by finding delta x or the width of our rectangles. We know that delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. And so this will actually be the same calculation as it was for our right endpoints, but let's just do it again anyway. This will be equal to eight minus zero divided by four, which is equal to two. So we know that the width of each of our rectangles is two, given that we wanna have four rectangles for the interval from zero to eight. And so you can see that for our rectangles in our diagram here, that each of them have a width of two. And so for our scenario, we'll have that L sub four, because we're using four rectangles, will be equal to the summation from i equals one to four of two times f of x sub i. And so just like we did for our Riemann sum for right endpoints, we'll pull out this value of two to the outside of the summation, and we'll have that L sub four is equal to two times the summation from i equals one to four of f of x sub i. And so now x sub i is going to represent the endpoints of our rectangles that are touching the function, right? Our left endpoints. And so x sub i is different in this case than it was for our right endpoints. They are going to be different values. And so in this case, those values of x are going to be zero, right? That is the value of this corner, x equals zero. And then x equals two for this corner of this rectangle. And then x equals four for the corner of our third rectangle and then x equals six for the corner of our fourth rectangle. And so that means that we're gonna have L sub four is equal to two times f of zero, that was our first x value we found, plus f of two plus f of four plus f of six. And so if we clean up our work here, we can then evaluate each of these x values on our function and find the area using left endpoints. And so in this case, L sub four is equal to two times F of zero, so 64 minus zero squared. So 64 minus zero is 64, and then plus two plugged into this function, so 64 minus two squared, and that will be 64 minus four, which is 60. And then four plugged into this function will be 64 minus four squared. And so that's 64 minus 16, which will be 48. And then if we plug six into the function, we'll have 64 minus six squared, which is 64 minus 36. And so that means we'll have plus 28, right? So in this case, the height of each of our rectangles are right here. The height of our first rectangle is the Y value right here, which is 64. The height of our second rectangle is right here. And that is the Y value of 60. For our third one, it's right here. And that is 48. And then for our fourth one, it is right here. And that is the Y value of 28. And so then if we go through and simplify this, we'll have that this is equal to two times 200. That is what 64 plus 60 plus 48 plus 28 will be. It will be 200. And so that would be equal to 400. And so that would be the approximation of the area under this curve using rectangles with left endpoints. And so notice how much greater this value of the area was than when we used the right endpoints our area with right endpoints was equal to 272, which is a lot less than 400. And so while this area with right endpoints was an underestimation of the area under this curve, the area with left endpoints is an overestimation of the area under this curve. Notice how we are including area that is above this curve, right? We are also including all these little areas and not just this area. 
And so it's safe to say that the area under this curve is between 272 and 400, right? It's going to be greater than 272, but less than 400. And so that's our best guess at the approximate value of the area under this curve using four rectangles. And so then just like we did for our right endpoints, for the left endpoints, x sub i in this case, for this formula, is going to be equal to our lower bound a plus i times delta x minus delta x. And this would be equal to a plus delta x times i minus one if we pulled out delta x from each of these terms. And so if you're not convinced, you could try using this formula by plugging in the value of delta x and the lower bound a, as well as the different values of i, just like we did when we looked at x sub i for right endpoints, you would find the same values of x of zero, two, four, and six that we used in this calculation. And so this is going to work to find x sub i using left endpoints. All right, so when you wanna find the area under a curve or approximate that area using left endpoints, this is what you're going to use to calculate that area. This is the formula for a Riemann sum that uses left endpoints. Right, we have delta x here, which is the width of our rectangles, times the summation from one to n, where n is the number of rectangles, for our values of x sub i, or those left endpoints evaluated on the function, which would be the height of each of those rectangles and of course we would be summing them up. Okay, so now that we have found the area using right endpoints and left endpoints for right and left Riemann sums, here are the two formulas that we used, one for when we wanna use right endpoints and another formula for when we wanna use left endpoints. And so although these look very complicated to remember, it's really the x sub i part of this formula that seems the most complicated, right? We have this a plus i times the width of our rectangle, or when we have left endpoints, it's a plus the width times i minus one. That can be a little confusing, but that's just a formula that tells you how to find those values of x sub i or your endpoints if you don't know where they are. But I'll show you an easier way to determine what your values of x sub i will be, right? So if you have an interval that you're looking at from a to b, where you wanna find the area under a function for, and then if we were to look at one rectangle that we are using to find that area, let's just say we have this rectangle here where this point is a and this point is a plus delta x, right? It's going to be this value plus the width of this rectangle. If you're looking at this rectangle and you're using left endpoints, which would be this side of the rectangle, right? This is the left side. Your first value of x sub i or x sub one would be equal to that lower bound a. And then your next value x sub two would be equal to that a plus delta x or the width of the rectangles. And then your next value x sub three would be equal to a plus delta x plus delta x. So you would just continue to add delta x to get your next value of x sub i. But if you're looking at right endpoints, then your first value is going to be this side of your first rectangle. So you'll have that lower bound plus delta x. So for right endpoints, you'd have that x sub one is equal to a plus delta x and then you would continue to add delta x to get your next value of x sub i. So x sub two would be equal to a plus two delta x's, and then x sub three would be equal to a plus three delta x, and so on. And so really a shortcut to figuring out what your endpoints are is that if you're using left endpoints, you start with your lower bound a, and then continue to add delta x or the width of your rectangles for each value. But if you start with right endpoints, you're gonna be starting with your lower bound plus the width of the rectangles, and then you continue to add the width each time. And so that's going to be the difference between those values of x sub i. And so just remember that this is the left side of the rectangle, and this is the right side of the rectangle. And that will help you figure out what your endpoints are. All right, and so with that, that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some example problems where we calculate the area under the curve using the Riemann sums we learned in this video, feel free to check out the examples video I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.